Hello. So today is um, Friday, June sixth. It's about four seventeen, four eighteen p.m. I am going to have a four twenty talk with you all on YouTube. So I got my empty bowl and I got some weed here. The last of my weed for this bag. I'll buy some more today in the evening. Uh, my dealer's not available until the evening, he says. And there we go, some weed right there. All right. And what time does that clock say? I'm just gonna go check it on my other computer over here. It says 418 over there. Just watching Pot TV, uh, Jory Emery doing a vlog talking about how her husband Mark Emery is going to be released from the American prison in about 35 days and then he should be free in Canada in about two or three weeks after that. So right around the end of July or very beginning of August, Mark Emery should be back. The day that he sets foot in Canada again has a free man. I know I'm going to celebrate that day and I'm sure there's going to be celebrations across Canada that day. So Mark Henry is a great guy. Okay. Just a couple more sex seconds and then it'll be 4 9 4 20. Checking out the computer time, uh, it's probably pretty, pretty accurate. All right. Yep. It says 420. So happy 420, Winnipeg family, world. Cheers to you all. Cheers to you all. To um, touch on that last topic I talked um, I talked about uh, yesterday um, about the makeup, I finished it off and I, I finished it off a little wrong. I think I think uh, you all probably misunderstood me, uh, thinking that I said that it was makeup is the reason for the continued existence of third world and poverty and you know children starving to death in the third world. No, it's not makeup the reason it's for that is I believe that that's the reason for that. No, it's the power of the Illuminati that is the reason why the third world continues to exist decade after decade. It's the power of the Illuminati, their control over the world 
And so I'm just showing an example, or talking to you about an example of the power of the Illuminati and their manipulation of the masses through the media, and, you know, and convincing half the population that they got to wear makeup. <clears throat> they have that kind of power. They, and that's all I wanted to share with you is that I believe that it's the Illuminati and their power that has kept this world the way it's been and stopped the human race from improving ever since the 70s. Basically, the beginning of the 70s should have been the end of the third world, and when that didn't happen, everybody should know that the fix was in. The Illuminati has locked down the human race, not allowing it to evolve in the better at all. And so that's the end of that. <clears throat> now I'd like to segue into talking about Mark Emery. I hate nothing more than commercials. I hate almost all mainstream media. I do like listening to songs sometimes, um, mainstream media songs like rock and roll and metal. Um, but I definitely hate the commercials. Anyways, but Mark Emery is coming home soon. But how he ended up going to jail in, in, in the United States. I want to talk about that. Yeah, he sold the DEA. The DEA post has regular people in the United States and bought some seeds, mail order marijuana seeds from him. Mark Emery mailed them from Canada to the United States to these undercover C C DEA agents. And then they charged him um, uh, for uh, illegal marijuana. <clears throat> and um, they uh, wanted the Canadian government to extradite him to uh, America so that he could be tried and punished. And, uh, uh, and even though Canadian citizens fought the Canadian government to try to stop the Canadian government from shipping Mark Emery to the United States, um, that, that failed. Um, the Canadian government traded on Mark Emery, a Canadian citizen, and gave him to the United States so that he could be um, cruel and unusually punished. And I believe that Mark Emery has a huge lawsuit against the Canadian government for that. And probably in a five or ten years, he's going to end up getting like $20 million from them. That's what I believe. Anyways. So, yeah, Mark Emery went, uh, the, yeah, the DEA, the United States government charged him for uh, um, dealing with marijuana across international borders. And, uh, and, uh, and then... Charged him with that, and then threatened him. Threatened to him that they would charge and go after all of his loved ones. They'd go after his wife. They'd go after his children. They'd go after his friends. They'd go after his employees. All of these personal people that Mark Emery knows, the DEA and the American government, prosecution, court prosecution, threatened to try to put all of these pr people in American prison. They threatened to hurt them by stealing money for them, from them or kidnapping them and putting them in jail. And so, <clears throat> and so they said to Mark Emery, yeah, we're going to go after all these people unless you plead guilty to a deal. And so rather than fight the charges and uh, let the judge pronounce him guilty or innocent and pronounce the punishment. Mark, Mark Emery um, succumbed to the threats and chose to accept their deal and chose for himself to go to jail without the judge telling him he had to just because the prosecutors were threatening him. That's what they do to everybody and they all plead guilty because they're all afraid that the prosecutor is going to make their mom and their dad and their sister and their brother and their wife and their husband go to jail too because that's what the prosecutors do. They threaten everybody in order to try to get their way. They don't think about the big picture 
about who's doing real harm here. Of course, they will once they get to be close to their deathbed, and I'm sure that'll be a huge regret for them. Anyways, so yeah, Mark Emery pled guilty to the charges and so facilitated his own jail term, which was a tragedy, and kind of betrayed his own activism out of the fear of his loved ones being hurt, which is too bad because there's a very good chance that the judge wouldn't have went after his loved ones. And there's a very good chance that he would have won his court case and not had to have spent any time in jail. But he you know and avoid all that by accepting their deal out of the fear of their threats. And so uh, he, and so that one wrong move, I call it a wrong move, he is going to try to ignore when he comes back. He's going to continue his own activism, which is good. But I hope he also admits that that was a mistake and that he shouldn't have pled guilty. <clears throat> but anyways, that's just my little opinion on that and about people who get caught for marijuana and then plead guilty to the threats of the prosecutor, due to the threats of the prosecutor, and, and therefore take it out of the hands of the judge as to whether or not to punish the person for marijuana. Don't do that, people. Let the judge have the opportunity to punish you or not for your marijuana charge. Don't listen to what the prosecutor says. The prosecutor is not the judge. And I believe nowadays, especially nowadays across this world, every judge, a huge portion of, of judges presented with cannabis infractions will not punish the cannabis user. That's my belief. All right, so there I got it out. One more toke, we call it a day, or we call it a sesh. <clears throat> and you know, Mark Emery and all the publicity he got and going to jail and all that, it could be, could have been the spur, the, the catalyst uh, to make marijuana legal in Canada in the next year or two. Um, one could say that, one could hope that. And so, you know, one can never tell what actions will lead to what. And so even though I believe that he shouldn't have uh, accepted their deal, I still consider what he did activism and not running away from it was activism and, and facing them head on as the enemy and is very honorable. What he did was very honorable. And so I respect him. Mark Emery is my hero. Cheers to Mark. Woo! Mark is coming home. Couple months. Yeah! Cheers for now, folks. <laughs>